Okay, so the countdown has begun. I believe we are back in our respective correct uh, positions, correct seating, yeah. as it were. And uh, we're going to get right into game two, guys. Hope you enjoyed game one as much as we did. And uh, am I mistaken here? Is it just because I have a full stomach? Or did it really seem like JYP, while not executing flawlessly, could do no wrong in game one? Like... He really uh, seems well, to just get that job done. That kind of just shows you the power of the Protoss third base, as uh, a lot of people are really discovering the true potential of what happens if Protoss can uh, play a little bit more defensive. Full screen. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, as uh, Protoss can play a little bit more defensive, but uh, more importantly, we're fixing a couple of technical, uh, issues. technical issues right okay. now, but looks like we're going to go ready, go back in, and here we go. So. Uh, I think it talks about the potential of the third base of Protoss. More importantly, if they get that third base, how much power they can have. Because you saw yeah. that, no matter what, he killed off almost everything. Two more Colossi would pop out, and momentarily he would have a two Archons and a dozen Zelts. So it's just the power of five bases right there was really powering JYP through. The ability uh, to reinforce, even after losing engagements, is so clutch right there. And I'm going to switch that word to key as it's become a buzzword, but uh, it is so key right there. And you know what? Uh, don't want to disrespect the players at all. Uh, let's get into some player introductions. And up here we see spawning in the northeast, Evil Genius is the Muslim as the Red Terran facing off against the man who took game one, Evil Genius's JYP, spawning as the Blue Protoss. So, uh, exactly right, Proton. I mean, what we saw there was the power of a Protoss economy and the ability to go ahead and reinforce. And, you know, essentially. I mean, on paper, the Muslim looked really good. I mean, he added yeah. ghosts when he had to. Uh, you know, he, he got his upgrades early. Got his upgrades early, exactly right. It remained safe with those bunkers, right? So JYP didn't really, wasn't able to break that bunker line. But at the end of the day, JYP really just getting it done. Well, uh, we do see that JYP did get inside to the base of his opponent, I believe. As a, yes. Yeah, so now he does see that the Muslim's taking no gas and that is a pretty indica heavy indication of a one barracks fast expand and JYP probably is going to go for a one gate expand again. Now keep in mind the Muslim did choose this map and so he does have that advantage in terms of he knows what he wants to do but for now I think the Muslim is just trying to play his game because he knows he could have done that game a lot better in terms of uh, engagement because a couple positions despite the fact that JYP kept trading inefficiently he kind of let JYP do whatever he wanted. He, he was did. the one initiating and the one dictating the terms of the battle. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, again, we can be as critical as we want. Uh, so, you know, yeah, there was maybe some sloppy force fields in there. Didn't pick his engagements the best. Uh, threw away some army units. Remember, he had the Colossus misrallied. But who cares if it's pretty, man? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. What matters is win, getting the job a win's done. A win's a win. A win's a win. That's exactly right. So Zealot uh, of JYP, very active, just going to go out and scout around. Yep, so it looks like JYP is moving out here. Now he just wants to see if he can scout around just a little bit, just to see if there's any kind of stray units uh, hanging around, trying to see if he can scout. But at the same time, he's also hiding it uh, temporarily. He is going to go through the watchtower path, though, on the southern side and realize that nothing is there. But more importantly, let's go ahead and look at the Muslim's natural front. What does he have? He's got a bunker that's about to finish, and he also has another command center. Now, JYP, last game, tried to do a little bit of a pressure, yeah. but was kind of uh, thwarted by any kind of attempt by the Muslim. He tried to do a couple force fields, didn't really work out, and then backed off. And that's because the Muslim takes his defenses very seriously. He puts up two bunkers, not one, which automatically takes that much more damage. And JYP taking a lot of it health damage on the Stalker. They almost lost it, but uh, at the same time, he gets a good read of the Muslims playing very safe, and he's not going to be greedy. Well, he definitely took some haul damage there, as we like to say. 42 hit points out of 80, uh, essentially losing half of its life, but shields will regenerate, uh, making it a little more hardy, and you can see uh, expansion now for JYP just getting underway. So we do see the three barracks follow up here from the Muslims, so he's going to go up to four barracks uh, just for right now. In the meantime, we're going to see what he's going to use his gas for immediately, whether it would probably be for stim, which is probably a really common transition, uh, or combat shields, or some kind of idea. But the, uh, the main core concept is the Muslim staying on bio, and that's what he wants to commit to, Tumba. Well, you know what? It's where he's most comfortable, so I can't blame him at all. Yeah. Uh, I have to feel like in this particular game, uh, he's really amped up after game one, and is definitely out for blood. So, But again, you have to illustrate 
wants to stay safe. Look, both bunkers loaded up, ready to go. He can pull SEVs at a moment's notice. Uh, JYP, though, happy just to position these two stalkers here, and all that's going to do is that's going to give him a heads up. When is the Muslim moving out? What kind of type of composition does he have? And uh, as you can see, uh, this SCV is going to come out. Will not live very long. That poor drill just going to get busted right off. Absolutely. Like a rusty old arm there. JYP, those stalkers are like hoodlums, man. They just go to the front of cars and just rip off the drill logos. Yeah, man. That was... <laughs> Absolutely. They didn't care at all. They did not care at all. They didn't even ask for permission. They didn't ask for permission, nothing. Nah, that SCV nah, nah. was dead. And I gotta say though, JYP's probe initially was very, very brave trying to mine before it got taken out by the SCV. Yeah. So. <laughs> <coughs> but we do see that uh, JYP, the way he's transitioning right now is just to get an observer just to be safe. We do see the Muslim spending a scan to get a good read of the Protoss base. Now that's actually really key because the Muslim, he's playing super safe. He's getting two bunkers. He's spending one of his scans to look at uh, Protoss Natural Front without even its planning of attack. A lot of times, Terran, the only time they'll scan is like they're right, right before, before their an attack. attack yeah. But uh, at this point, he's just trying to get a good gauge of what Protoss is doing. See sentries and zealots. He's going to move out here. And that's actually a lot of Marines with combat shields. Yeah, so. of course, combat shields adding to the resilience of the Marine, making it a much more hardy unit. Uh, and you can see right here, this is where JP, JYP rather is going to beat it home. And just take as many pot shots as he can. Try to weaken as many of those Marines as possible. Well, yeah, he's looking to try to see if he can kite as much as possible. Just because those stalkers do outrange the Marine just by one. A hair. So uh, we'll see whether or not the Muslims actually going to commit to this. Uh, he does know his opponent has four skills. He's going to see whether or not he can uh, bait it out here. And you can see JYP really getting oh, aggressive wow. there. With the oh, sorry about the camera control there for a second as the mouse freaks out. And as you can see right now, uh, JYP actually losing the sentries, however, segmenting off a good amount of Marines there. And three more sentries now uh, added low on energy, obviously. And wow. So did you see how aggressive he got with the sentries in the front? I really think yeah. I felt like... Uh, at a moment's notice there, uh, that was really a good opportunity for the Muslim to snipe those sentries. Yeah, and I can understand what JP, uh, JYP, it's not JP, <laughs> uh, JYP wanted to do, he wanted to extend his sentries a little bit forward, and then force field the Marines according to the bottom of the ramp so they can't actually move, but uh, didn't actually get the zone he needed correctly and kind of overextended itself, so the Muslim's in a good position now, he managed to kill off some units, he did trade some, several Marines, but in the end, it was a better trade overall because he did, ma did manage to keep some of the such account low for our Protoss players. So let's go ahead and check in on the status of upgrades. Stim's about to finish the build of Concussion of Shells and plus one. A great timing aligned here for the Muslim, but he's also getting his third command center, which does mean he does plan on follow-up expanding. JYP getting out his first Colossus and getting up that plus one, plus one upgrade is ever so crucial as we were talking about the double forge play. Absolutely, Froden. That's right. And JYP also... Great read on everything right now that the Muslim has. Has that observer parked in front right of the natural, so you can uh, bet your bottom dollar that he knows this little contingent is coming over to try to pressure now. Uh, the question is, where is the Muslim going to go with this? Yeah, that's actually a fantastic question. Where, What does the Muslim plan to do? Does he ch plan to try to pick, pro uh, pick Protoss apart by dropping and trying to pressure the natural front? Does he try to elevator play? Does he try to simply go up the front and then elevator across force fields? There's different things and approaches you can take. Is he going to take more of a Puma style? Or is he going to take more of an MMA style? So we'll see what he's going to choose to do. But Looks the like idea he's is just going to run spin. right up here. Guardian still pops. Zell's going to come in. And oh man, Colossus right on time. And that's just going to melt that bio army. No chance right there. But it does get picked up. Some of it does get picked up by the medevac, so a few are able to escape with their lives there. Uh, once again, though, JYP looking really solid at home, uh, playing really to the defender's advantage right now. Yeah, so that was uh, a good attempt by the Muslim, but completely thwarted by great patience there from JYP, bringing his classes just in the nick of time now. His plus one, plus one just finished. He should not push out without Thermal Lance. That, well, he should not commit to an attack without Thermal Lance. He's going to absolutely I think need that. I think he's actually, this is part of his timing, though. I, I think that he's got this down to the point where we're going to see him pull up and, and just sit back for one second while extended thermal yeah. lens finishes. Uh, uh, as you said, it would be a mistake not to engage, or rather, yeah, rather I mean, to engage without thermal lens. It's such a critical upgrade for those Colossus. One thing I'd yeah. love to see uh, JYP do is go ahead and uh, come in through this area here and try to take out this third. With those Colossus, he has enough army right now 
to go ahead and really just decimate that little contingent of what the Muslim has. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're correct, and I was, I was just saying that JYP, he's moving out in the middle of the map, but he doesn't know exactly where the Terran army was, so he has to be a little bit cautious, but now he has a general sense of where it is because his observer has discovered where um, the location of the Terran army. Oh, wait, hold that thought. Here we go. He's going to catch a project like Guardian Shield. It's popped, and Colossus are going to work right now. Stiv going down, and as you can see right now, supplies almost dead even, as uh, actually it looks like this battle is gonna come out in favor of JYP as the Colossus do remain and there is so few bio units. Some reinforcements coming in. Can you get rid of the Stalkers though? This is gonna be a close one. Oh yeah, I mean the Marauders coming down and it's very, very important. So despite the fact that JYP fed it off the first wave of units and I was actually not sure if whether or not JYP should have attacked here because the idea is in the open field. The Muslim actually could spread his units. Right. Which the force fields actually help him a little bit do so it wasn't the best force fields but JYP initially got some good damage on, but as a result, the Muslim still able to press in. Now, the Muslim did send some of his SCVs from his third, now pulling some of his SCVs from the natural. Looks like he's losing a lot of stalkers as well, though. JYP losing almost his entire army, and all of a sudden, we see the Muslim has a pretty hefty supply advantage. Absolutely, and it was so close. Supplies were very equal through the whole thing. You didn't really see anybody plummet, and uh, three Colossi remain to the light uh, bio that was left. However, you know what? Pulling the SCVs and reinforcing is really what put the Muslim in the lead there. So again, using defender's advantage. Uh, both players using defender's advantage very, very well. And I'll tell you what. If JYP would have gone and checked that third earlier, he's aware of it now. He sent his observer down. There was such a small contingent there that he could have engaged on his terms. Instead, like you said, Froden, he engaged in the open field, which is not good for Protoss, especially without having the gateway units to support the Colossus. Yeah, and well, as a result, we see that right now, the Muslim does have that temporary advantage. He is going to see if he can drop to the top left here, as uh, one medevac is moving. Actually, several medevacs are moving out here. The I Muslim trying it. to see if he can do a huge amount of damage, and JYP kind of out of position, trying to drag his delt and the rest of his army back to the main base. Does oh. actually snipe a Nexus, but some units do get caught here by the minerals. So, do trade some units, but killing that Nexus is pretty important. Uh, in just not, not necessarily in terms of the minerals, but just reducing the gas counter Protoss. So, exactly. very, very big play there by JYP. Gas oh, is the by important Demuslim, factor. Excuse me. Yep, gas is the important factor, no doubt, when it comes to Protoss. And without stalkers, really, uh, or a heavy stalker contingent, those medevacs, they can feel free to roam around here and look for opportunities uh, for other drops to try to snipe key tech or maybe even a gateway or a pylon here or there. But you can see right now, uh, JY pretty P uh, pretty much on top of it in terms of defense, and now adding some more stalkers will pick off uh, that medevac. Yep. So we'll see that at the same time, the Muslim is not done you know, dropping. I am a little bit shocked this observer is still alive. Uh, essentially, you'll see many Terrans scan to kill that observer, and that observer has been there far too long. And the Muslims, I, I'm kind of shocked he hasn't noticed the flicker. Yep. Uh, pretty much, I mean, the whole idea is w the Muslim should be able to take out that observer just so he can uh, hide movements, but not just hide movements, but hide his composition, because yeah. you want to get a good sense of how many ghosts are in the army, but look at this, because he saw the drop just leaving, JYP was completely prepared, he's going to shut down this drop immediately, and man, the Muslim got shut down completely, but yeah, there's doesn't matter because the Muslim's though, yeah. moving out to the middle of the map, Getting position here in Tumba. This was a big trap here set by the Muslim because now he can move up here and now Protoss is all of a sudden separated from his natural. It's a it's a trap. It's an Akbar moment. So here we go. We see the charge lots now moving in. But I don't know. Right now, both Colossus going down. Charge lots are doing work. However, uh, landing the Vikings and I think that the Muslim is just going to come out of this one ahead. But again, it's very, very hard to tell. Uh, supply lead currently. But you know what? Those charge lots able to clean it up. Well, it's not necessarily that, oh, you, first of all, you said that the Muslims still come out ahead, and the reason why he is is because he killed, again, the important the units. Yeah, the, yeah. the Colossus. So he right. wasn't able to break JYP, but eventually, if he keeps up this kind of momentum play, he should be able to eventually whittle him down, because JYP doesn't really have that strong uh, of a core army just yet, although his economy of his third base is already rolling, and he's getting his fourth up, so if the Muslim waits too long, 
then all of a sudden you'll see that the Muslim is uh, going to be in a kind of a s interesting situation. But for now, looks like he's pretty good as his fourth base is also completed, and he should have a lot more mobility because right now the only thing going on for favor of JYP are several Zells and a couple Colossi. Okay, so here's the deal: two, three on upgrades for the Muslim, three, three for JYP. So that is a, b a factor for sure. Uh, however. You know, I, I like where the Muslim's head's at. I love using the misdirection that drops. Drag that Protoss army all over the map because that's what you need to do. Uh, exploit the fact that it's not the most mobile army in the world. And bringing that Observer back, I'm sorry, but that Observer has lived far too long. <laughs> yeah, you know, the Observer uh, has been doing a good job there, but it looks like the Muslim non-stop aggression here with his medevacs. But at the same time, he's also gearing up to push uh, across the center of the map here where JYP is moving. And looks like JYP is kind of on the pursuit here, which I don't think is a good idea because the Muslim's about to hit maxed when JYP is just scratching the surface of 140 supply. Doesn't really have, again, that much strong AoE, but the Muslim actually cleans up the base in the bottom left, and he's just going to move down the ramp here, try to see if he can harass more of the probes at the third. Absolutely. So we're going to check this out over here. As you can see right now, just attacking from the high ground. Zealots trying desperately to get there in time. They do not. This is what you have to do. Tax the multitasking of your opponent. Mm -hmm. Always something you want to do. JYP, this is really the hero observer, to be honest. Has given uh, JYP the drop every single time on the troop movement, on the composition, on everything. Very marauder heavy right now. Yeah, and you know, it's very interesting because as you see, as you transition late game, I know you don't want to actually get that many Mirage. You want to lead more towards Marine just because there's so many ways to deal with it, especially when it comes to Zealots. And it looks like the Zealots coming in full force here. Looks like JYP has a pretty good engagement with Zealots, but there's just maybe too much stuff here from the Muslim. That's right. The macro is just unbelievably hard to match at this point when you're in the position of JYP into Muslim. Looks like he's going to push in here. No Vikings needed at this point. He can land them. There's enough medevacs to be able to hold out everything else and restore the health of many of the bio as the Muslim is going to push in here, shut down the third, and shut down JYP's ability to come back in this game. Shut it down, Froden, and that's exactly what he's doing. And there's the GG out of JYP. Wow. So, as you can see, they said, uh, really, uh, mu uh, the Muslim sort of inspired by that first game to play a little bit better, I think, and... Uh, getting the job done. Uh, defeating JYP, no easy task, man. That guy no, is very, all. very tenacious. Not at uh, all. Even if he's not able to get a full Protoss Death Ball assembled, he does so well with the units that he does have that uh, it makes it very, very difficult. You really have to earn your victory against a player yep. like JYP, but the Muslim doing just that. So, series is tied. We're going to go off to the ace match. I think it's something about this station in particular here at MLG that uh, sort of correlates to ace matches because we, yeah. we always seem to get to an ace match off this. It's actually pretty funny, yeah, yeah it's true. So the selfish part of me loves this because an ace match, I mean, that's awesome, right? You get to see the game go the full series all the way to game three. Very exciting stuff here at the MLG Winter Championship. So, Froden, do you have any predictions for who's going to take this? It's too tough because we saw two polar opposites of the Muslims play. We saw the one that was playing a little bit scared, a little bit intimidated by JYP, yeah. and then we saw the initiate, the, the one that takes proactive initiative, the one that says, "I'm going to uh, see if I can just be aggressive, drop you while trying to test your multitasking as you were putting it." And the Muslim just went for a completely different strategy, much more uh, drop oriented and much more map dependent. So again, that was the idea of the Muslim picking Shakuris. We'll see how Tyler Malter figures out here for the Muslim and JYP. Game number three, guys. The winner of this will end up claiming the win for their seeds in the divisions. Keep in mind, JYP is one and one, and the Muslim is one and three. 